With the American economy faltering, President Obama has proposed the wholesale nationalization of many student loans. Education, he proposes, is the solution. There's only one problem. Obama's interference in the education system is already crippling the next generation. Obama pays lip service to recognizing that communities and families matter, but he's done everything he can to substitute the federal government for those communities and families. Under the 2009 American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, nearly two times the annual budget of the Federal Department of Education, USDE, that's about $100 billion, was allocated to improve the nation's public school system. Where did the cash go? The U.S. Government Accountability Office found that instead of funding reforms and raising student achievement, the education stimulus money simply went to retaining staff and current education programs, i.e. preserving the status quo. Then there's Race to the Top, funded at $4.35 billion, a federal competitive grant program that was part of the Recovery and Reinvestment Act. The key to the program was that states were encouraged to adopt national academic standards and assessments. Well, what did that mean practically? Nationalizing education. As one Wisconsin state legislator opined, this is a race for the money, not a race for the top. Now, beyond the obvious ideological problem here, there is hidden costs to the states, which will have to revamp their curricula in order to meet standards. Now, for example, according to one estimate, California will have to absorb $800 million for new curriculum frameworks and $785 million for teacher and principal training, resulting in a total of $1.6 billion to change over to the new national standards. In Washington state, taxpayers would have to absorb a cost of $300 million to comply with the new federal standards. And in both California and Washington, after spending all that money, their applications for grants from the feds were rejected. Was this any good for the kids? No, not at all. California already had higher standards than the federal standards. They actually dumbed down their educational standards in order to get federal money. In fact, a University of Pennsylvania study showed that the national math standards weren't any better than current state standards. The federally supported program, which was supposed to be the gold standard, was mediocre compared to top performing countries like Finland, Japan, and New Zealand. The only mathematician on the validation committee for the national standards actually thought the new national math standards were problematic. What was the problem? As a result of all the political pressure to make core standards acceptable to the special interest groups involved, he said, the standards were made as non-challenging as possible. They were written to reflect very low expectations. In fact, by the end of fifth grade, the new standards were a full grade behind competitors in Europe and Asia. By the end of seventh grade, the standards were two years behind. Now, it's all about control in the end. By nationalizing education, Obama's master plan hands over educational power to enormous special interest groups, like the American Federation of Teachers, who bragged that they were involved in writing the education standards. They said they wanted national tests to deal with deeper thinking, not just rote memory which is code for de-emphasizing facts and figures and right and wrong answers. And as usual, the special interests win, the students lose, and we all pay more for the privilege.